FDM 3D printing is an amazing technology with many positives but a very well known downside. It's slow. People have found ways around this problem however by building machines capable of reaching insane travel speeds. But how good is that if your hot end can't keep up? It's a challenge in the speed printing community and today we're going to be taking a closer look at an aspect of your 3D printer's hot end, the nozzle, specifically copper plated ones. Here is a standard 0.4mm bronze volcano nozzle, commonly found on 3D printers using a volcano hot end, although I suspect this is going to change a bit. They are incredibly cheap and easy to get, costing only a couple of dollars for a pack. Copper plated nozzles however are a bit different, advertising faster printing speeds due to higher thermal conductivity, provided by the copper plating on the outside of the nozzle. But these are bold yet logical claims. Copper does have a much higher thermal transfer rate compared to bronze, but does it make a difference and is it worth the high price tag? Hey everyone, I'm Tommy and today we're going to be comparing the extrusion capabilities of a bronze nozzle, a copper plated nozzle from Triangle Lab, and a DIY copper plated nozzle that I made myself using readily available materials. Wasting no time, I installed the standard bronze nozzle on my Ender 3 and ran some G-code from the flow test generator. The results can be seen on screen now on this cool graph that I made. As you can see, the hot end is able to keep up up until around 26 cubic millimeters, which is the average maximum volcano flow rate before fluctuating a bit and maxing out at around 30 cubic millimeters. Next, I uninstalled the bronze nozzle and installed the Triangle Lab copper plated nozzle. I picked this nozzle up for around $15, making it quite an investment compared to the standard bronze nozzles that you can purchase everywhere for a fraction of the price. It's still not as expensive as a CHT nozzle however, but can it perform as well? The CHT nozzle is a topic for a video I haven't yet made, but if you are interested, Stefan from CNC Kitchen has an awesome video documenting it that I highly recommend you check out. On screen now are the results for the copper plated nozzle. Similarly to the bronze nozzle, the flow rate begins to vary at around 26 cubic millimeters before maxing out at around 28. Overlaying the two graphs, we can see the bronze nozzle is performing slightly better, but at this scale, it is hardly noticeable. Finally, we have my DIY copper plated nozzle. I made this nozzle using various chemicals while following an online guide on copper electroplating. I definitely recommend using protective gear when working with chemicals like these as they are no joke and you definitely don't want them near your skin. The first noticeable differences between the DIY nozzle and the commercial one is the finish. The commercial one is nice and shiny while the DIY one is lacking and looks almost rusty, but this may be due to my electroplating skill. I decided to give it a quick polish just to see what it looked like and this is what I got. Installing the nozzle onto the hot end and running the same test with the same parameters as before, we achieved these results, which once again look similar to the previous ones. Overlaying all three graphs, we can see that all nozzles max out at around 28 cubic millimeters, which is good, but shows that switching between these nozzles didn't really improve our hot end's performance. What we couldn't test though was nozzle resistance. Copper plated nozzles are able to perform at much higher temperatures compared to bronze and are also great at preventing filament from sticking to them, making them useful for printing with exotic filaments. So that concludes our experiment. It was very interesting to see all the different results we got and it was a lot of fun as well. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and hopefully I'll see you again soon.